Hello, Colorado Realtors. I'm Scott Peterson, General Counsel for the Colorado Association of Realtors. Thank you for joining me for the very first inaugural edition of Legal Bites. Legal Bites is a new series that we're going to be putting on a couple of times a month where I'm going to be trying to tackle uh, single issues uh, and do them over the course of just five minutes or so. Um, so stay tuned as we continue to produce uh, more of these and uh, hopefully it will you'll end up with a nice, uh, or we'll end up with a nice video library for, for our members, for you guys to access, uh, to uh, uh, touch on issues that, that may come up uh, going forward in your brokerage practices. So our first topic, and I don't know about you guys, but when I think about summer, I think about uh, backyard barbecues, cold beer, and ADA website accessibility. Um, it's a serious issue, and I'm, I'm only making light because I do hope that these can also be a little bit fun in addition to being uh, informational. So let's talk a little bit about ADA we at website accessibility, what it means for you guys, and how to, how to address some of the issues um, and concerns that I would have for you. So what do realtors need to know? So according to the U.S. Census Bureau, one in five people have some form of visual, auditory, physical, speech, cognitive, neurological, or, or other disability. All right? And... As part of that, they are covered and protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act. All right? Well, what, what do they need? They, they require somebody that can't see as an example or can't uh, hear as an example, they require a, a assistive technology to access websites. Uh, that technology is out there and it's available and used by them. And they include maybe screen readers or braille displays and other devices that can track uh, an individual's uh, eye movements uh, without the use of keyboards or mouses. All right, well, let's talk real quickly about the Americans with Disabilities Act, what it is. It was, a, it was implemented, established in 1990 by, uh, by uh, the United States government, by our federal government. And according to Title III, which is what governs kind of commercial um, or businesses, uh, it pro prohibits discrimination of people with disabilities, people that are protected under the ADA, uh, in places of public accommodation. And traditionally, a place of public accommodation is going to include a hotel or a restaurant, uh, shopping, uh, a store, a shopping center, places like that that might have um, uh, bathrooms that are accessible or corridor widths that are accessible for a wheelchair to move, um, those kinds of things. Traditional ADA stuff, parking spaces, of course. Um, well, it also applies to your websites. Your websites for businesses that are, that are covered under Title III, um, generally speaking, and the courts are a little bit split on the issue, but generally speaking, uh, you ought to be assuming that uh, your website is considered, as, as, as a business, a place of public accommodation, and a person that is using an assistive technology to access your website needs to be able to have that, that technology that they use work with the website uh, and, and the way your website's built. So, unfortunately, we don't have the Department of Justice, the, uh, the Federal Department of Justice is who oversees Title III of the Americans with Disability Act. They're responsible for enforcement of it and ensuring compliance. And they've talked for a long time about issuing some administrative guidelines. That won't occur, uh, they've announced uh, last December, that won't occur until 2018. So we won't get a lot of guidance, formal guidance from the Department of Justice before then. Um, that said, realtors are going to need to assume that your brokerage, individual, MLS, and association slash board websites are places of public accommodation and therefore they must comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act for the purposes of uh, accessibility. You're going to use that as a starting point. You should be compliant with the ADA and your website should be. So let's talk a little bit about some of the current actions. We're seeing an explosion in, in, in lawsuits. Or the, throughout the country they've seen an explosion in lawsuits related to uh, non-compliant websites or websites that are inaccessible by individuals that are protected under the ADA. And just to use an example in uh, uh, not, not necessarily specifically focused at brokerage or re the real estate business, although I'll talk real quickly about one, but in, 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 a court, in one district, in one federal district in uh, South Florida, 10 pla plaintiffs, 10 individual plaintiffs, have filed a total of 1,600 lawsuits against uh, businesses for failure to comply with web, uh, web access. One individual plaintiff in that same district has filed 606 individual lawsuits. Um, so there are people out there that are, that are um, certainly filing complaints to ensure compliance with businesses. In Nevada, the, the one that's most tangent to uh, the real estate practice, it, 
the Northern Nevada Regional MLS, um, they were hit with a, the MLS was hit with a lawsuit by one of their MLS members for failure to comply. And they're in a settlement kind of conference status right now. I think they're supposed to have uh, uh, settlement negotiations next month in, in August. Um, and so we'll see where that turns out. But um, they are, uh, the point is they are looking at, at real estate websites and um, again, as a brokerage or individual website, an MLS or a board, you are responsible for ensuring compliance. Okay, so what are some of the best practices? What can you do? What can your boards do? First of all, you want to determine if you're compliant. You got to figure out if your website is ADA compliant. Uh, again, we don't have formal enforcement guidelines from the Department of Justice and won't be getting them for a couple of years, but a pretty safe standard is something called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0, WCAG 2.0. And they, they lay out some very, very detailed guidelines for website um, uh, accessibility uh, guidelines for, uh, for businesses. And so a lot of it's stuff that's not going to mean a lot to, uh, to a broker or, or non-technical type professional. But I'd be talking to your IT administrator, talk to your website provider, and, and, and they'll be certainly familiar with the need to be compliant but also some of the standards that are out there to, uh, to help ensure compliance while we wait for some additional directive from the Department of Justice. Um, so that's the first thing, determine if you are. If you determine that you're not, then you're going to want to implement and develop some sort of an action plan, some sort of a timeline to get from non-compliance to compliance, right? Generally speaking, the Department of Justice on, on similar matters has given, have given businesses something in the 18-month realm uh, to get from non-compliance to compliance. Um, so in developing your timeline, you want to be thinking about some of those kind of time standards, but you want to have something that you've got in your file that you can access and say, listen, I'm aware this is, these are the steps that we will be taking as a, as a business to get from non-compliant into a compliant status over this period of time. And then the easiest thing you can do, and even if you are compliant, um, but certainly if you're not compliant, you want to uh, provide very visible, clear content on your website. You can do this you know, obviously very easily, uh, that, that gives contact information uh, to uh, a person that requires accommodation, and if they're unable to access portions of your website or parts of your website, that they can reach out and contact uh, you, somebody on your staff, your IT person, your website provider, and let them know that, hey, I, I'm not able to, to get access. Uh, my, my screen reader isn't able to see this image, or, you know, those kinds of things. Make it very clear that somebody can contact you, and that's going to give you some additional protection in terms of mitigating your risk and, and um, showing that you're aware of the issue, that you're taking steps to accommodate people, and that you're providing people with a, a resource to um, achieve accommodation in the, in the event that they need it. So those are some of the best practices and things that you can do. As always, you can call the legal hotline, uh, available 9 to 12 and 1 to 4, Monday through Friday, always answered by uh, a competent real estate attorney. and um, so for, for questions and a little bit of guidance on issues like this and other more traditional uh, real estate transactional kind of issues, the hotline is there and available uh, to you as a member benefit. Obviously, you should be running legal questions through your managing broker, um, and they certainly have access. And if the managing broker wants to designate an individual or additional individuals in that office, we're always happy to try and accommodate that as well. So thank you again for joining us for this very first edition of Legal Bites. Look for more episodes. Um, coming up shortly, and uh, in the meantime, enjoy your summer. Thanks so much.